Hi, welcome. This is going to be a short uh, video that talks just about creating accessible tables. Um, my name is Jane Affinney, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen in a Word document. I think that'll be the easiest way uh, for me to go through how to create accessible, um, accessible tables. So let me see here. Okay, so you should be able to see my Word document now. Um, I'm going to start right here with this first example. So this is something that we've all seen before. Um, and an accessibility tool is not going to flag this as anything being wrong with it, right? But the information that's here in this first table uh, is something that could easily be uh, shared not in a table, right? This is, using, this is an example of using a table for layout purposes. Um, but we could very easily just put this information in a bulleted list and nothing would be lost. So, uh, however, this table is doing a few things right. Uh, we always want to keep our text left justified. Otherwise, students with cognitive disabilities may struggle to read the content on your table. So, um, so I did want to um, go ahead and call that out. So now I'm going to move on to the second example. This is a complex table example. Um, but before we get into this one, I just want to point out to you that tables are read by assistive technology in their linear form. So linear form is gathered by starting from the first row of the table and then progressing left to right across a column. When the row ends, progression continues to the start of the next row. So assistive technology will assume that the first row of data and the first column of data containing heading information, that they contain header information, even if they don't. So please keep that in mind that that will be the, the default um, presentation from assistive technology. So this table right here has all kinds of bad things going on, right? Uh, so the first thing is that we've got um, heading styles applied in a table, which we never want to do. Heading styles are great for you know, other areas of your document, but we don't want to use them in a table. Another thing we want to avoid is merge cells, like you see right here, the second one where it says tests. And then we also have this one right here where it says projects. So this, um, this table is actually using those merged cells uh, to create headers within our table. So we definitely want to avoid doing that. And then you'll see over here we have uh, the split cell. And I think what it does is it kind of creates some confusion here. So I can see that we've got this group project um, and it's worth 200 points, but then it says draft April 18th final right here is May 2nd. So does that mean the final exam for the whole class? Or is that the final for that paper? Um, why is there this weird line separating April 18th? It just creates confusion when we don't need to have confusion, right? And then you'll also see that because we added this final right here, we now have these blank cells uh, right next to it. And we want to avoid using blank cells as well. So anyway, so now that we've seen this table and it's, you know, not ideal uh, presentation. We're going to flip over now and look at the, this is the same information, but it's presented differently now. And I think you'll see that it's, um, it's a lot more clear. So you can see I changed the heading right here so that it, well, first of all, I removed the heading styles. Um, so the, now it's, uh, it's been labeled the, the header row in the table properties. And uh, you'll see that instead, whereas in this example, we had just assignment up here, and then we had tests and we had projects. I've adjusted it so that it, now it just says assessments. And so we have the projects, we have the tests, we have the group project. You'll also see that I broke that group project into two lines here. And that, you know, it's actually, it's just the draft that's worth 50 points, and the final project is worth 150 points. Uh, and so now it's just, I've brought more clarity to it. It's more obvious when that draft is due and how much it's worth and when the final is due and how much it's worth. Um, so just small tweaks, but it, it makes this table, not only is it more accessible, but it's just easier for everyone to read and understand. Um, another thing here, I, uh, I went ahead and did a, a screenshot of this uh, rather than demoing it for you because the pop-ups won't show up in my recording if I, if I just right click on it. But I wanted to, uh, show you that uh, so when I'm doing a table I prefer to have a descriptive sentence that leads up to the table 
That way it can re be read by all students in the class and it just kind of aids in student understanding. But it's also a good idea to write an alt text description for your table um, because screen readers will read that description first and that will help uh, your students determine if they want to read the whole table. Um, and the reason we say that is because it really can be time consuming to read through a whole table. So it is valuable for you to go ahead. You, you don't have to worry so much about the title, but do write a description for the table. Okay, so now we've got another example of a complex table here. Uh, so this one gets a little bit more difficult. Um, so this is all fictional data, but it's uh, it's got enrollment data. And we've got basically uh, three heading levels here. Um, so we've got the years, which you can see over here. Um, we've got the academic institutions. So we've got University of Texas Permian Basin, and we also have Angelo State. And then we have student classifications. So you'll see those broken out. So um, that's a lot. A lot of information and uh, there's a lot of things that are not quite as accessible in this table. Um, number one, you know, we have these um, these rows, the text is centered and we talked about doing that uh, flush left to make that easier to read or flush right, either way. Um, but and then we have all these blank cells and another thing I want to point out to you is that we never want to leave the top cell in a table blank because that is the first cell that assistive technology starts reading. Um, so never want to leave that one blank. Uh, that's a, a bad first impression, I guess you would say. Another thing I want to point out here is that this table actually runs onto two pages. Um, and so ordinarily with a table, um, I would go into, I would right click on it and go to the table properties and I want to um, actually select to have the header row repeat on the second page. That just improves usability for everybody. But in this case, I can't really do that um, because I have I'm, I've had these universities identified not in this header row. The header row only has information about the year. So it wouldn't do me any good to repeat the header row on the second page. So uh, basically what I want to do is um, I want to break that complex table into two tables. That's a, a great way to uh, now create more simple tables and to avoid any issues with uh, the tables. That way we won't have any merged or split cells. We won't have any weird um, you know, subheadings throughout the document. You can see now on this one, um, it's a lot easier to read. I've labeled this first column classification um, and I've got the years after it and then I've I've got all my information, all my cells filled. Now I have a second table over here, which has enrollment information from ASU. Um, and you can see it, it goes on to the second table, but I have selected to repeat the header row. And, uh, and so now we have the classification and the years at the top of the second row. And so here's where you would go in to do that. Here's another screenshot of that. You would do your table properties, you know, right click on your table and do table properties. You're gonna go over to row and you're going to uncheck to allow the rows to break across pages, right? We wouldn't want the rows going on to more than one page. That would be a big mess. But we do want to repeat the header row at the top of each page. So that's what that is. So um, now I'm going to switch gears. And um, well, actually, I'm going to do it right here. We will create a table. Um, because I, I feel like that's an important thing to go over. Uh, I don't I want to make sure we don't skip that. So uh, when I'm going to create a new table, I'm going to do table and you'll see here I have two options. You know, I can insert a table or I can draw a table. You never want to draw a table. If you draw a table, it's basically like flattening an image, right? And um, assistive technology can't read it and it can't identify that it's a table. It strips out all of our structure tags. That we, well, it just doesn't add structure tags the way we want it to. So we want to insert a table, right? Um, and so, of course, we could do it also using the, those little cell, the, the little boxes there, like it was just showing up above. Um, you, this is also a totally acceptable way to add a table, just to stretch it over here. Or you can do insert table like this. Um, and whoops, I guess I had my cursor in the wrong place. But you can see here um, that now I've got my, my table inserted. Um, I want 
to use one of these table design styles up at the top. Uh, when I do that, it's going to, when I apply one of these styles to my table, it's going to properly identify um, my header row and my first column for assistive technology. So that's why when you're using Microsoft Word, I would absolutely make sure you use one of these table designs and make sure you do insert table as opposed to draw table. Okay, so now I want to show you um, the difference um, within Adobe Acrobat. So I'm gonna stop sharing this and share Acrobat with you so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so now you should be looking at my table with styles applied to it. So when I run the accessibility check for this one, uh, well, I went to my accessibility tab. Now I'm running the check for it. Um, my document has three issues, um, but none of them have to do with the table. My table has passed and everything because I, I created it in Word. I used um, those, the, the style options that they had in Word and it just took care of everything I needed with this table. So it passes all my accessibility stuff. Now, this was a table that was, that I, where I used draw table. Uh, so I'm gonna run the accessibility report here. Oops, I think I clicked the wrong thing. Accessibility check, I'm sorry. Um, so now you'll see, if you see over here in my accessibility report, I have all kinds of issues. I'm missing alt text. My table has four issues. It's failed and all these things uh, because the, all that structure tags, all those things are gone. Um, so when it says, when it's referring to TH and TD, uh, so TH is used for the, to identify table header cells and TD is used for table data cells. So it's saying both of those failed because it can't recognize them. Um, and the table regularity, this is, means that it does not contain the same number of columns in each row. Um, you can see this table has the same number of columns in each row, but I think just the fact that it can't pull any information from this table means that it's gonna fail it across all of those options. So you can kind of see um, some of the challenges there with doing draw table. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing that. And uh, last thing I'm gonna share with you is um, an example of a table. So again, thinking about your tables and your content uh, from the perspective of someone who's just listening to it with assistive technology. Um, let's see. So I'm gonna show you a table and I'm sure a lot of you, so hopefully you see this tab now. This is from one of our engineering uh, syllabuses and this is, uh, they have ABET for accreditation purposes and uh, I mean, that's their accrediting body. And, um, and actually, hold on, ah, give me just a sec. I don't know if I checked when I started sharing to see if you can hear what's going on on my computer. So let me, that's like a new thing for me to, start checking that box. Um, let me see here. Okay, so now you should be able to um, hear my audio with that, All right? Okay, so I'm gonna use a tool called uh, Read Speaker, which we have available in uh, Blackboard. Now this is a, a web reader, so it's, it's not the same as a screen reader, but in this case, I, I do want you to hear what this table sounds like so that you would have a, an idea of what someone using assistive technology would hear when they were looking at a table like this. Um, because this table has these blank cells in it, we know as sighted viewers what this is trying to indicate, right? When we look at this accreditation table, we can tell that what we're trying to do is identify that uh, this particular course meets the outcomes for solving problems with its first objective and it meets the uh, design objectives with uh, the course objectives five and six. So we know that from looking at this, um, but if you're just listening to it, I'd, I want you to hear what that sounds like. Let's see here. 
A bet, a bet student, student outcomes. outcomes. One, One, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six. six. One, One. Solve, solve problems. problems. X. 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 Okay. So hopefully that uh, was more clear uh, or, or helped you see kind of what some of the challenges are when we have tables like that, where we're just marking off columns and rows instead of making sure that we have content in all the rows. Um, so in that, in that, here, I'll share my video just to wrap this up. Um, in that particular uh, situation, I would just present the content in a different way. Probably would not do a table at all and instead just put maybe have a, a course outcome listed and then have in parentheses what the accrediting outcome or the accrediting body's outcome is that it you know, that it matches that it fulfills and just write more specific instructions leading into that list so anyway it's a lot of it with tables is kind of just reimagining our content and doing something different than what we've done before so anyway that concludes uh, everything i wanted to say about tables thank you all so much for your time and please let us know if you have any questions i know tables can be kind of tricky but hopefully that shows you they're they're not maybe as intimidating as you thought before. So thanks again for your time.